Hello, in this video we briefly introduced the concept of linear regression. And this is part of a playlist that I have called General Linear Models Regression. And we just sent uh, 20 videos on simple linear regression and now we're jumping into multiple linear regression. <clears throat> so here to represent the multiple linear regression model in scalar representation, Y follows this model plus some error. Now the key though term is linear and that means linear in the beta parameters. None of these beta parameters are squared or square rooted or cubed. They only have to be they have to be raised to the first power and they have to be added in this type of fashion. Now the X's can be anything. They're considered fixed. You could have the log of X, E to the X, X squared, the, these don't matter. It's the betas that have to be linear. Now we collect a sample of size n. So this observation represents a person or a unit or an observation. <coughs> the assumptions that we have is that these are, these are fixed unknown constants and the x's are fixed or measured with almost negligible error, but the error term is random, which then makes y random. So our assumptions are on epsilon, the, that the mean of epsilon is zero, the variance of epsilon is constant, sigma squared, the covariance between any two epsilons is zero, and those first three are called the standard assumption. <coughs> if we introduce the fourth assumption, <coughs> where we, we give it a distribution, say normal normally distributed with mean zero, constant variance, sigma squared, IID, so they're independent. Then we can start introducing hypothesis tests, confidence intervals, and do you know maximum likelihood and, and many other things with it. But to do least squares estimation, we do not need assumption four. Now, in multiple re linear regression, <clears throat> most of what we do will be in matrix form or matrix notation. And so this is the model in matrix notation. So it's y is equal to x beta plus epsilon, where this is an n by k plus 1 matrix. This is a k plus 1 vector, n by 1 vector, n by 1 vector. Notice that the betas here, there's 0, 1, 2, up to k. So there's k plus 1 betas. And that's, that's represented in this vector. And then, so the y vector is y1, y2, y3. So it's up here, y1, y2, y3, but we just put them in a vector. Now here, this x beta, this is called the design matrix. When you take this vector times that first row, we get beta 0 plus x1 beta 1, x2 beta 2. So this first row, we actually get this back right here. And the epsilon is in this vector. It's, it's, so it's the first component there. And so we represent all n observations in just this tight little uh, matrix notation. So the assumptions in matrix notation. So first X is an N by K plus 1 uh, design matrix and it has rank K plus 1. So that's what's called full column rank. There's more rows than there are columns and so it's full column rank. The assumptions that the uh, epsilon vector is a zero vector. Uh, 2 and 3 up, uh, above is that the variance of epsilon is sigma squared i. So that means it's a constant variance down the, you know, the diagonal. But all the off diagonals, which are the covariances, are zero. So that was assumption three above. And assumption four for normality is that ep the epsilon vector is multivariate normal with mean zero and variance covariance matrix sigma squared i. Now, Graph uh, interpretations of these parameters. Here's a couple graphical illustrations. Now, 
In simple linear regression, we plot the data and we fit a line. There's only one predictor that helps us predict y. Okay? And this is what we call the true regression line. These are the parameters. This is y, uh, you know, x1. And um, that, that's it. And so the data fluctuate around this in a constant fashion called sigma squared. Now here, we're using two predictors to predict y. And, and the shape of this right here is a plane. So it, it you know, I, I can't make my hand do it. So it's a flat surface that goes through three-dimensional space. That's what this is. And then the data fluctuate around that plane. So some may be below it, some may be above it, some really close. You know, that distance away from the plane is what we're calling epsilon, as the distance away from the line is what we call epsilon. Now, uh, beta zero, which is this term and this term, or you know it's you know or in the multiple linear regression setting where you have k predictors, beta zero represents the average y when all our predictor variables are set at zero. Now this is only valid that when that point is within the scope of the model. Now in simple linear regression we spend a little more time describing scope but what it means is that when you collect your x data you know it has to kind of go and cover when x is zero right for this plot right here the scope is from there you know to there and so the interpretation of beta zero is not valid because it's not in the scope of the model, right? We don't now the data follows this, but once we get past that point, it actually maybe it dies down and goes to here, you know. So this isn't a true representation of our data. Um, same way with the with a plane or any other hyperplane in you know in in k dimensions, is uh, that the scope of the model has to include that zero zero point or you know or the zero 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 point or how many predictor variables you have for that to be a valid interpretation. Now the beta parameters, so say beta i, you know, which i goes from one to k, it represents the change in the average y corresponding to a unit increase in xi, with the remaining xi held fixed. And again, you know, this is only valid in the scope of the model. Okay, so in the simple linear regression setting is when we increase x by one unit, the average y, you know, increases, you know, this much, right? But that average increase is only valid in the scope of the model, right? So if we were to, you know, use an x1 out here and go one unit, we don't really know if the average y is going to follow that same model because it's not or the same, you know, yeah, same model, the same beta parameter because it, you know, out here it may go exponential or it actually may go back down or so we don't know what happens out here. So the interpretation of the beta parameters is only valid in the scope of the model. And the same way here. So the interpretation of beta 2 is assuming x1 is fixed and we increase x2 by one unit, then the average y increases by beta 2 amount. But that's assuming that we're, you know, we, we're actually in the x1 plane fixed, and then we increase x2, and then the increase or decrease in the average y is what beta 2 is. And again, this is only valid in the scope of the model. Well, that's all I have for this video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.